मदद जी अस्सलाम वालेकुम हम आ गए एक और ब्लॉग के साथ और दोस्तों आज के दिन में ना हैपनिंग बहुत ज़्यादा है बहुत ज़्यादा भाग दौड़ है आना जाना लगा पड़ा हुआ है और ये हमारी मनिया बाजी हैं हाथ लाए हाँ तो आप लोगों से मिलता हूँ ब्लॉग्स के दूसरी तरफ हाँ तो जी हम आ गए ब्लॉग्स के दूसरी तरफ और अभी एक बहुत ज़िंदगी का संगीन तरीन मसला ये मनिया ने खड़ा कर दिया ये रही इसको अपने भाई की बाइक नहीं पता और अभी हम बहुत अर्जेंट बैंक पहुँचने सो so, हम लोग देख रहे हैं देखते हैं और अनफॉर्चुनेटली यहाँ तो कोई मोटर बाइक नहीं है देखते रहते हैं बहुत ही एक अजीब और गरीब सा फ्लैट है किताबियाँ तक यहाँ पे फेंकी हुई उन्होंने देखो जरा काम देखो भाई काम देखो ये किसकी है एक तरफ अकेली उखड़ी है गार्ड को नहीं पता होगा हम्म मिलते हैं जी आप लोग अच्छा जी हम फाइनली अपनी डेस्टिनेशन पर पहुंच चुके हैं और बहुत ही पुराना हबीब यूनिवर्सिटी की बुल बुलैया तो अभी हम फिर से जो है अपना लेक्चर रूम ढूंढ रहे हैं कि हमें हमारा लेक्चर रूम मिल जाए लेक्चर अटेंड कर सकते तो लक्सी के हमें हमारा लेक्चर मूव मिलता है कि नहीं इसी के लिए हम थोड़ी सी भाग दौड़ भी कर रहे हैं देखते हैं मिलता है कि नहीं मिलता पर सिल अभी तक हमारी जो है वो लाई चल रही है कान फंड है और अनफॉर्चुनेटली लंच टाइम भी हो गया हमारा मुक्ता मारा गया बट देखते हैं बसंदी बहार पंजाबी रचना नाट वाट मसूम भी हो गई यार क्या होते हैं यार खो गए हम लोग ठीक है तो जी भैया कोई मेरे ख्याल से एक घंटे की खुआारी के बाद हमें हमारा ऑडिटोरियम मिल गया यहाँ पर हमारा सेमिनार है बट वही अनफॉर्चुनेटली अभी यहाँ पर लंच ब्रेक हुआ हुआ है तो सेमिनार दो बजे शुरू होगा तो अभी हमें यहाँ पर थोड़ी सी खुआारी करनी है तो माशा तबीयत से ये यूनिवर्सिटी में है ना भूल भुलैयाँ बहुत सारी हैं तो मैं पहले भी एक व्लॉग में कह चुका हूँ बंदा कहीं पर भी खो जाए हबीब यूनिवर्सिटी में कभी ना खोए अच्छा खैर एक चीज़ जो मुझे बड़ी अच्छी लग रही है ना इस यूनिवर्सिटी की खामोशी बहुत है हम लोग कई के गरीब बच्चे पढ़े हुए वहाँ हंगामा शो भाग दौड़ और साफ सुथरी सारी सारी यूनिवर्सिटी हमारा के यू को मतलब हमें भाई प्यार है अपनी यूनिवर्सिटी से लव है हमारा बट माहौल का बड़ा असर होता है चीज़ों अगर अच्छी साफ सुथरी यूनिवर्सिटी आप प्रोवाइड करेंगे तो पढ़ने में भी मज़ा आएगा लोग पढ़ना भी चाहेंगे तो आप देखिए मेरा ना यहाँ पे एडमिशन है ना कुछ है पर यहाँ पर जब भी मुझे इन्विटेशन आता है मैं उड़ता हुआ पहुँच जाता तो ये होते हैं सारे के सारे सिलसिले जिसके थ्रू बंदा जो है ना वो काम करता है अभी है कि मुझे यहाँ आकर थोड़ा सा मज़ा भी आता इसलिए मैं यहाँ आता भी फिर इंतज़ार भी करता हूँ फार भी होता हूँ पर फिर भी आता हूँ इस वजह से थोड़ा सा जो है ना मुझे मैं चाहता हूँ पर खैर के यू के अलग सीन है के यू का जो रकबा और ये सारी चीज़ें हैं वो ये लोग कम्पीट भी नहीं कर सकते सोचे तो भी नहीं कर सकते तो ठीक है जी और लोगों से मिलता है सेमिनार के अंदर शुरू होने वाले थोड़ी देर
As, as we move along the course of the day, you will see how the themes we discussed in the morning, what we were talking about in the afternoon, and then the last session, session finally interconnect in how we think about urban space, how we think about art history, and then how that relates to large scale exhibition making. Um, so, with this panel, uh, we have Saloni Mathur from UCLA as our moderator. Uh, Saloni is an art historian. Uh, you may know her book, The Migrant's Time. Um, she, we're really, really privileged to have her with us today. Um, and I think uh, it will hopefully lead to some in depth questions from each of the presenters today. The presentations are a mixture of mid and early career researchers. Um, could we shut that door? And we're going to start with Saira Ansari. She is talking about uh, not just the artistic practice, but also the institutional practice of Zubeda Aha, who, um, of course, was a woman artist who had the first exhibition of modern art in the newly formed state of Pakistan, but also set up uh, the Rawalpindi Art Galleries, which really became the roots of our national art collection. Um, so really looking forward to, to learning more specifically in the context of um, the work that was happening between Dhaka and Karachi at that time. Uh, the second is Samin Aikbal. Um, from 1947 to 1971, artists from East Pakistan, which is now current day Bangladesh, developed a thriving and dynamic relationship with galleries, institutions, audiences in West Pakistan. Following a bloody independence struggle riddled with war crimes, 1971 saw the succession of East Pakistan into an independent Bangladesh, consequently ending all relationships with West Pakistan. Since then, the discourse around Bangladesh and Pakistan became one-dimensional and deeply censored. While pre-1971 uh, era publications like the Pakistan Quarterly, which will be discussed in the session after this, and a few later academic texts do shed light on the joint modernist movements and supporting ecosystem between the two wings of Pakistan before 1971. And because these histories are fraught with political and cultural violence and separately published content, largely in Urdu and Bengali, um, makes material accessible to each side that doesn't speak the other's language, and hence it's not an easy task. A better understanding of the 1947-71 years can help identify historical developments in the art of the region and analyze the effects of cross-national exchange and representation. My paper looks at one such channel, which allowed an exchange of artwork and ideas during those 24 years, that of contemporary art gallery Rawalpindi, the first independent art gallery of Pakistan, which was founded in 1961, 14 years after independence from British colonial rule. Pioneer modernist artist Zubeda Awa was appointed director, but she also played the role of researcher, curator, manager, and accountant. That gallery helped create a platform for artists across East and West Pakistan, and exhibiting works both nationally and internationally, connecting to varied audiences and encouraging cross-pollination in an attempt to work together as one nation. From the, from the time of its opening till its closing 16 years later in 1977, upon our delegation, the gallery put up a staggering number of shows. Some estimates put this as well over 200 shows. Today, very little documentation or literature exists on the programming and impact of the gallery or the knowledge that much of the gallery's collection was donated to the National Art Gallery, which is Pakistan's first art museum and an initiative that had AWA on its founding body. Due to AWA's reclusive nature following the gallery's closure, her life remained on the peripheries of the main dominated art and literature circles of the country. She kept to her studio painting in solitude and opened her house to publicly only host exhibitions. She passed away 20 years later in 1997, and many of her contributions as a gallerist and patron remain undocumented or examined in depth. While there is literature on her role as an artist, and case in point with the Khardavi book Modernism and the Art of Abu in South Asia, there is little to no academic literature available on the gallery in its programming, other than an acknowledgement of its existing, uh, existence and supporting press material. In early 2016, um, I began working on a research project in AWA, which was supported by the Lahore Biennial Foundation and overseen by Asia Archive and Dadi. The task, the task was to sift through archival materials still sitting in, in AWA's residence. The project scope was only for digitizing selected research material on AGA, progress of which is still underway, but it opened up many more channels of inquiry for me. 
With access to a number of primary research documents, I was able to get a glimpse into the development of East-West Pakistan art networks through the lens of the gallery she established and its programming. And through this presentation, I seek to introduce the history of the gallery and its engagement with artists from Bangladesh, as well as shed some light on state involvement in the art world of the early years. In the archive and material of Jean, one of the first documents I sorted were of the first fine art societies of Pakistan, from West Pakistan to its size. The first exhibition organized by the Karachi Fine Art Society was in September 1948. Works from East Pakistan included 15 paintings by Zainal Abidin, of which only two were for sale. Abidin is considered one of the most important modernist masters of Bangladesh, having a prolific body of work spread over nearly four decades, and recognized for establishing the Dhaka Art Institute. We know that Abidin was also enlisted by the government of Pakistan in the Cultural Administration Department and was asked to facilitate cultural development in East Pakistan. Hence, his relationship with the West was very active and public, and he was an active participant in Pakistani West Pakistani exhibitions. This increased level of engagement might be one of the reasons that Zainal Abidin is one of the few Bangladeshi artists that are well known in Pakistan but always in the capacity of his artworks and always in broad introductory notes. His working relationship with West Pakistan is never really discussed. What work did he show? Who were his patrons? How did he perform in his role as cultural ambassador? Etc. And these are some of the questions that come to mind. This 1955 catalog of this solo uh, exhibition of the Arts Council Karachi was found in Ava's archives. Inside, in what I believe is her writing, one can observe quickly drafted notes of, sale, notes of sales made and interest shown. We can see interest by Mr. Wilson from the Ford Foundation, or that from a certain Kaos Chi, which is well recognized from the Farsi family in Pakistan. So the question is, was Ava facilitating sales for the Arts Council? It's not very clear. From materials collected through the archive, I learned that Ava was closely involved with the formation of the various fine art societies, either in the capacity for board member, officer, or participant. And she was a founder member of the Arts Council Karachi, which explains why she had this art catalog and perhaps why she was connecting to patrons for Abedin. These side notes also leave room for one to track where many of the artworks, Abedin's and others, went. Once Ava set up the gallery in Robert Pindi in 1961, she started working from a room turned office space and hand wrote or typed scores of letters to artists all across East and West Pakistan. And in a spectacular response, she immediately started receiving artworks from all over in the mail. In the surviving gallery documents, there are several portfolio images as well as hand typed files of artists, including those from East Pakistan. Many notes, I believe, were written in collaboration with her brother, Aga Abdul Hamid, who was in the bureaucratic service, a board member of the Fine Arts Society, and also a well-known art writer and critic. The archives include a number, a number of pages of CV-like bios and sometimes small notes, like this slide uh, on Mohammed Kibriya, um, this one, who is referred here as a young painter and noted to be studying in Japan. These, I believe, were drafted shortly before or during the time that she was setting up the Contemporary Art Gallery and were compiled for a show that the government of Pakistan was putting up at the Centro Cultural Santadel in Milan, in Italy. This exhibition, which was an invitation of the Cultural Center and the Italian government, was to bring together works by the top Pakistani painters of the time and supported by a photography exhibition and films. Complete letter and cable correspondence exists in Ava's archives, which starts with invitation by the Cultural, cultural Center's representative, uh, Mr. Springetti. A back and forth ensues between him and Mr. Jalaluddin Ahmed of the Pakistan Arts Council Karachi. A number of people are drawn in, including the well-known poet and activist Faiz Ahmed Faiz, who was then the secretary of the Arts Council of Hall, and Zainal Abidin, who was then the principal of the Art Institute of Dhaka. While records show that Faiz was asked to travel, it seems Alba was chosen in her role as an executive committee member of the Arts Council of Pakistan to put together and coordinate this show, and then to travel to Milan with it, both as a representative, but also as the Italian brief requested, as a person who could deliver talks on the exhibition. A letter from Springetti to Jalaluddin Ahmed, dated September 1960, said he was unable to visit Dhaka and hence unable to meet the artists. So he asked Ahmed to ensure that inclusion of artists from East Pakistan was ensured. From January 25th to March 15, 1961, the exhibition was installed under the title Mostra di Pittura Pakistana Contemporanea, Exhibition of Contemporary Pakistani Painting at the Galleria Santadal. Records show that the exhibition included 55 artworks, out of which 15 were from Karachi, 21 from Lahore, and 19 from Dhaka. Um, and because this paper was originally written for the context of examining East Pakistani artists, there was a list of artists from Dhaka that I included, which were Anwar al Haq, Amin Islam, Abdul Basit, Muhammad Kibriya, Abdul Razak, Kayyum Chaudhary, Rashid Chaudhary, and Sakyuddin and Mohit, which were very much a um, part of the conversation of uh, you know, Pakistani art in China. Supporting this exhibition, exhibition was an installation of 150 photographs, 45 transparencies, and two films. And one of the films was shortlisted with Jago Jago was aware of, has also shown in the whole magazine. 
Because of the visibility of correspondence, work lists, photographs, and the catalog in the archives, I believe it would be easier to trace the actual events around the exhibition, trace installation views, and find out the success and reception of the exhibit from press outside at the time. Such an event would have had diplomatic press, and such documentation would also exist within the Pakistan Aviation Museum. Perhaps most intriguing is that in his correspondence from December 1960, Prince had written saying that he would push for the exhibition to travel, and that he would be speaking to the director of the gallery of Gerano, Gerano in Lugano, Switzerland. He also mentioned uh, bringing the scene up to the fine art authorities in Venice, or, as he had added, asking the ambassador if he'd prefer Rome instead. I could not find reports of the exhibition traveling, but it would not be entirely impossible to trace what happened next. In 1962, in its first year of programming, the Contemporary Art Gallery opened an exhibition largely showcasing East Pakistani artists. The commercial exhibition include, uh, included uh, close to 45 works by 13 artists, and the selection was put together by Zainal Abidin. This record is only made possible through a found press clipping from the Pakistan Times dated March 29, 1962. Attended by the Minister for Railway and Communication, Ethem Khan, the article includes certain trope quotes about tradition and identity. So, I quote, The Minister said that he was deeply impressed by the profound sense of belonging to soil which some of the East Pakistani artists have always exhibited and maintained in the works. End quote. Another catalogue in Ava's archive is its national exhibition of paintings uh, from 1964 to 65, held at the Pakistan Art Council in Dhaka. The list inside gives a clear glimpse of the artists that were shown across East and West Pakistan. Ava spoke about showing her work there in a press interview soon after. This is the only instance that I have logged of her exhibiting in Dhaka, though so this is in no way the result of an exhaustive search. By 1969, Ava was heavily involved with the Committee for the National Art Gallery in Islamabad. This was to become the first institutional gallery of the country and was to house a permanent arts collection, which I mentioned earlier comprises the size of the donation from Ava. According to one press interview, she donated close to 35 works of contemporary paintings, which were either privately acquired or gifted by the artists. Unfortunately, construction of the National Art Gallery was delayed heavily for many years and it only opened in 2007, 10 years after she passed away. Apart from being a member of the Board of Directors and the Executive Director of the Society of Contemporary Art of Pindi, Agha was a member of the Board of Governors of the Pakistan National Council of the Arts of Islamabad, member of the Board of Governors of the National College of Arts Lahore, and a member of the Central Board of Film Censors. It is quite possible her role in interacting with East Pakistan encompassed film and photography as well, but that is left for future examination. To bring the presentation to a close, I wanted to share these two images. I came across this catalogue from early 1973 in the Agha archives. It seems very emblematic of how things changed after 1971. The publication seems to accompany a comprehensive national exhibition, listing the top painters across the country, and was shown in Islamabad, and then, as the poet says, traveled to other countries. Of course, with East Pakistan now an independent country, all the familiar and recurring names are absent. The challenges of nation and institution building in newly independent countries are always complex. But for anyone familiar with the lives, beliefs, and ideological affairs in Allah, their presence on the, on the selection committee is very, very sweet. This preliminary material forms the first steps in my research, hopefully leading to further inquiries into, into how East and West contexts were developed in West Pakistan and later mirrored in other art galleries, art councils, and publications in the art centers of Lahore and Karachi. In the end, I leave you with this quote by Zubeda Awa from 1988 that perhaps sums up the discourse of those heady early years. Thank you. Wealth, and even the hearts and minds of people. Wazira Fazila Yaqub Ali, a historian of modern South Asia, states that everything was divided from the vast machinery of colonial state crafts to tables and chairs, weather instruments, and military hardware to railway engineers and office clerks. People in the government and military services were asked to choose which post independence nation state they want to serve. There was massive migration involving vast displacement and one of the largest massacre in the world history. Right now we back हाँ तो जी दोस्तों अब आज का दिन जो है वो एंड हो गया और सिलसिला कुछ ऐसा है कि आज ऑलमोस्ट अभी यूनिवर्सिटी भी सुबह गए और फिर उसके बाद और भी दो चार काम थे वो भी करने थे 
सब कर कर आके आज का हेक्टिक दिन जिसे वो ऑलमोस्ट एंड की तरफ है तो आज के ब्लॉग से आप लोगों को अल्लाह हाफिज़ बोलेंगे और आखिर में जाते जाते वही बात लाइक करें शेयर करें कोई अच्छी बात है तो उसको कमेंट करें अपना फीडबैक दें चैनल से रिलेटेड कोई फीडबैक है तो वो हमें दें और सबसे आखिर में चैनल को सब्सक्राइब कर दें अल्लाह हाफिज़